What's going on everyone? It's Brad here. Today we're going to be carving a spoon out of black walnut. All right, I'm going to start off just by batoning this. Um, basically right down the middle, I'm not going to need all of this wood. So go ahead and take off what I don't need. All right, I've got this piece all baton down basically to the thickness I feel comfortable working with. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, flatten out the top now because that's where I'm gonna go ahead and start my bowl. I wanna make sure that's nice and flat first. I'm just using this Mora carving knife. And walnut is a fairly hard wood. It's not um, as hard as hickory, but uh, if you're gonna go ahead and start carving spoons, it might be easier to use a softer wood, maybe a willow or a poplar. I'm just using walnut because I really like the, uh, the heartwood in here. It looks really pretty. All right, I'll just remove a little bit of this bark on the outside. not going to be utilizing any of this so I might as well take it off right now. All right I'm gonna go ahead and start my bowl now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and choose the widest piece of wood or the widest part of my board here which seems to be this part up here. I'm gonna go ahead and start my bowl right around here then I'll run my handle down the heartwood. All right I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start my bowl now. I'm just using my this is a Mora hook knife or a spoon knife or a scorp. It's got a bunch of different names. They come in a ton of different sizes. Uh, if you want to go ahead and get one, Mora does sell some cheaper ones. All right, immediately I'm seeing some bug trails in this wood, as you can see right along here. So my best guess is that that would run right through the heartwood, which, um, which is not good, but I think we can maybe try to work around it. And I'm just holding my hook knife like this, and then I'm just applying pressure with my whole arm. Taking cuts from the left side, and then I'm moving them over, taking cuts from the right side, until I get a big enough bowl that's really gonna be my uh, cutting method right there, just kind of back and forth. And then I'll start being able to kind of round around my bowl like this as my cut is a bit wider. And this is just gonna be a camp spoon. It's not gonna be a, a huge spoon. So I'll make this about the size to where I can fit it in my cook kit. We'll have to make this a bit deep to get down below that bug trail. Now I'm carving green wood here. Um, it's good to make sure that when you're carving green wood, you have time to sit down and carve your entire piece because if you leave it half finished it'll crack as it dries out and uh, that's no good so what I do is I carve the entire piece and then I soak it in water and then right when I take it out of water I oil it and I never have issues with cracking If you're gonna carve a dry wood or something that's dead, you wanna make sure that you don't pick a piece that's all split up because uh, you're most likely gonna run into some cracking issues along the way, and that's no good. You can't always predict though with dry wood. You can be as far as I am and then just run into a crack on your next cut. So it is a lot safer to carve green wood as long as you have time to sit down and do the whole piece. All right, I'm just doing some final passes 
in this bowl right here. I just want to uh, kind of get rid of all the big ridges. We'll go through and do a little bit of a finer touch up at the end. But I'm about ready to go ahead and start taking off all this extra material that I don't need and start working down the handle. And uh, if you didn't notice, the reason I didn't start with the handle and I started with the bowl is because I wanted a nice sturdy thing to grab onto when I was carving this bowl. If I had a thin handle I was grabbing onto, a lot of force going into here might have broke this bowl. And it's also a lot safer to have a, you know, a good uh, amount of meat on this bone to grab onto. Helps you turn it and uh, kind of guide your cuts a little bit more. So I think we're good to go ahead and call it quits on this bowl for now and move on to the handle. Alright, so what I'm going to do is kind of baton down the sides of this and kind of keep them curved out a little bit. I don't want to go too far. So what I'm going to do is try to go in until I'm kind of touching that heartwood and take it right down the heartwood on either side. And then we'll carve down the heartwood from there. So let's see if we can get a good angle in here. That's not bad, we got a good chunk coming off right here. We'll go down on this side a couple more times. Can probably carve it down the rest of the way from here. Now it's really important not to get too close to that bowl. So this is a good time to use the uh, saber grip. Go ahead and put your thumb up on top. Get your leverage from your thumb and not just your arm. You can kind of control it a little bit more. Make smaller cuts. All right, you can see I've got this thing kind of tapered down. You can kind of see how it's taking shape now. I'm gonna go ahead and start taking care of some of the bigger chunks now. This whole top piece I'm not gonna need. I can uh, carve at it or whittle at it for a while, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this off with a saw. So we'll take this off really quick. Just be careful not to hit that bowl. All right, we cleaned off uh, the top of the spoon here. Now you can see on the back here, we've got kind of a big bulge going on and that's a lot lower than where our bowl is. So this whole bulge needs to go. It's a little bit hard to carve in here and stop before I hit the back of the bowl. So what I'm gonna do is kind of mark where this is gonna be. Right at the bottom of this bowl here, I'm gonna flip this over. And I'm gonna make a cut right here. I'm just gonna go down maybe a centimeter. Maybe a little bit more, but that looks good to me. I think I can go a little bit deeper, actually. All right, so now that'll be a good stopping point. So if I'm carving, my knife will know where to stop. It'll stop right at this cut. So it'll be a little bit easier to kind of take this shape down. You can see I kind of click these out. Now you can see I'm kind of building up a ridge. This is where the back of the spoon is gonna be, the bowl. So I'll kind of bowl nose this ridge down once I've got this carved out. All right, so we've got this ridge going on here that we made with our saw. You can see on this side, I'm starting to join the two pieces. I'm just kind of pulling these together. And we're gonna start working it over here. So let me go ahead and start bull nosing this end off a little bit and pretty soon we'll be able to come in with one big clean cut you can see my strokes are getting a little bit bigger now got a little bit of a knot here that we're working with there starting to pull this together just clean the back off a little bit because it's getting a little bit high for us now 
Alright. This is looking good. I think we can get lower than this knot, so this shouldn't actually be in the spoon. Let me see if I can work it down a little bit. Alright, the spoon is really starting to come along now. Starting to actually look like a spoon. You can see the uh, heartwood is kind of in and out of this bowl a little bit, and that's alright with me. I think that's still kind of a cool look. We've got it going all the way through the handle here. Uh, we got to just take a little bit off the back. It's getting really thick back here. Still a little bit thick up here. And then I need to take these uh, little corners off or horns. So we'll go ahead and finish this off. Get off a lot of this uh, bigger wood that we don't need. Kind of start working these corners. All right, so we're getting really close to our final form here. Just getting rid of a lot of the high spots still and taking the handle down. Um, I noticed this bug trail goes right through the handle. I didn't know that it went all the way through, but I'm just gonna assume it probably goes out the back because I do see a bit of a hole back here. So uh, this handle is gonna be a little bit of a thin handle, but I think we can manage with it. Let me just go ahead and thin this out a bit, see if I can get through that bug trail. All right, so we were able to save this handle. We had a bug trail coming out along the side of the wood here, and it actually moved around the handle. So I removed all of that, and we ended up having a really thin handle, but that's okay. I think it'll hold up fine. I'm just gonna finish up the back of the bowl here. We've got a little bit too much meat on here. So if you see, every time I remove, or I make a little bit of a cut, I develop a few more ridges. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna cut over those ridges and I'm gonna keep doing that and making my ridges smaller and smaller and eventually it'll be a little bit more difficult to see the carving lines. Now if you have sandpaper you could probably start sanding at this point but I'm just gonna kinda of work it down with my knife slowly until I'm happy with it. Alright so uh, we're just about finished up with the spoon. Um, this, the handle is really thin. I don't, I don't know if I've ever really brought a handle in that thin before but uh, seems to work fine it's a little bit top heavy or bottom heavy I guess I could say but uh, this is a spoon that would work just fine at the uh, campfire you know just simple camp meals so once you've got a spoon to this uh, point something you're gonna want to do is soak it in water and that'll help release a lot of the tannins in the water or I'm sorry the tannins in the wood so what you could do is stick it into a a canteen of sort or a stream just tie it off if you're gonna be doing it in the stream and you're gonna leave it in there for about an hour now I'm not gonna do this this is just a quick demonstration but I am gonna get it wet to make sure you guys can see the uh, true color of the heartwood it's a lot darker than uh, your standard heartwood using black walnut so it's got a pretty cool look to it yeah this is the finished spoon for the most part so you guys can finish this with uh, beeswax or any food safe oil or salad bowl finish. Um, I know there's a company called Hot Words that makes a really good uh, butcher block oil and butcher block conditioner and those are great for um, putting on spoons. It'll help kind of preserve the wood and it'll make it last a little bit longer for you. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. This is uh, my finished spoon. So uh, maybe next time I'll use a different material or try a different design. But that's a quick video for you guys. Thanks for watching. My name is Brad and I'll see you guys next time.